What about weight? Is, is that related to fatigue and, and to fibromyalgia? I don't think it helps. Um, I do, generally speaking, they are the ones I train anyway. The ladies I train tend to be on the overweight side. Mm -hmm. And then again, you've got a question. Are they overweight because it's not as simple as they're just overeating or they're not moving? I think there's more underlying causes that trigger off. Mm. So the weight will not help. I find that some of them that have needed some sort of surgical intervention due to the pain that they're in mm -hmm. can't have it done because of their weight limit and they're, they're surpassing it to what an anaesthetist will be willing to do with surgery. Mm. So it does start to limit them. But it's all that comes into, I think the weight comes into that whole vicious cycle again, that at the end of the day, there is something that is triggering it off. And I think it is some level of trauma. And until that's dealt with, the rest of it sometimes just doesn't shift. So in your experience, Cam, is it, is it that um, patients have pain, fatigue, mm -hmm. like let's say we're talking about fibromyalgia purely, they have pain, fatigue, cognitive issues, therefore they don't want to exercise because it's not comfortable mm -hmm. and then they put on weight yes. or is it they're already leading an unhealthy lifestyle have put think, on the uh, weight and then, and then i think they're already on that trajectory in the first place mm -hmm. before the diagnosis happens and then once the diagnosis happens well it's then very hard to come out of that cycle mm -hmm. so a lot of my role is actually taking them from not doing anything at all which is what we'll do with the demonstrations of exercises today is taking them from not doing, because it is the fear factor kicks in. Mm -hmm. The fear factor kicks in, how much will I actually be able to do? And then take them with that positivity, that positive feedback, seeing what they can do, encouraging them, showing them that they can do a bit more. And then if more movement happens, the more muscle mass improves, the more efficient they're going to get with their movements. And, and it could make make or break from, you know, I could walk with my husband or mm -hmm. my wife, uh, whereas normally I'd have to sit mm -hmm. while they walk. I might just be able to walk with them. It mm -hmm. makes it, it, that makes that little bit of difference yeah. to their quality of life. Um, so, yes. It's um, a little bit off topic, but we see that with uh, migraine patients, that people with chronic migraine who have these like high frequency mm -hmm. migraines, so that could be like 10 migraines, 14 migraines a month. Wow. It's a lot, you know, basically That's every other lot. day yeah. having a, a headache. Um, there's a, a weight relationship with weight there as well. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, if you're in the overweight category, you're more likely to progress and have frequent yes. headaches. But also if you're in the underweight category, so with cast there, if you, you know, struggling with weights, but also if you're kind of swinging from, from underweight to overweight, both those categories aren't great. No. And then if we look at the population, two thirds of the population are overweight. Yes. And then you're not saying that last third is, is healthy weight because in that we've got the underweight category as well. Yeah. So actually the percentage of the population that are to their ideal weight is probably mm. quite low. Not very often you come across that. Mm. Um, I do find, I try not to focus in on the weight. I, I think for me, it's focusing on the movement and getting them moving successfully first. And if they can break that cycle of moving a bit more successfully, managing their fatigue and their pain a little bit better, the weight is something that will come naturally afterwards mm -hmm. rather than focusing on the weight first because the chances are they've just done very or little movement yeah at all